So far on our quest to find a boat to take to the 125th birthday party of the Statue of Liberty, we've nearly bagged the Mayflower 2. We want to take your ship to uh -huh. New York. What do you reckon? I think we need a little wad of money a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> nearly stuck Rory's head onto the end of a pike. Stand and stand! And unsuccessfully nearly left Dara behind. Dara is not actually on board this boat. They generally go over there. They already left. Now we've just five days to find a boat we can all agree on. You, stop throwing up to him and kind of hey, That's what it is. And it's available. I think we just missed you then. And get to New York in time for the party. Right, this fun part over then. Is it now just really just like a boat? A boat, a boat. boat. Time is running it's out. It's got to do eight knots and it's got to have a hooter. We've left Plymouth on board the sports fishing boat, the Andy Lynn, with skipper Mario to cross Cape Cod Bay. We're on the trail of a boat with an extraordinary history, one that may be a strong contender to take to New York. We can just see Cape Cod now coming out ahead of us, like a sort of mirage coming up out of the horizon. A great big spit of land, and right at the end of it is Provincetown, which is where we're going now. Although on the way, we hope to see some, some fish, because we want to go fishing, and we hope, of course, to see some whales. Not that we're going to fish for the whales, we just want to see them leaping about. I know, I know, I know. This is ridiculously relaxed and fun, and, but we're doing it for a reason. we got to get from over there to over there. You may be wondering, by the way, why I'm suddenly in my wet gear, but I've been sitting on a couple of chairs here, and it's a bit like Elvis playing a conference school. There isn't a dry seat in the house. Mario, the intention is to fish just off the edge of, of, uh, of the bay right. right here. Right now you've got about 300 feet of water. Yeah. It's going to come right up to about 30 feet, just like that. We just passed some guys. What are they fishing for, then? Tuna fish. OK, and what are we going to fish for up here? Uh, mostly blues. Blues? Yeah. Blue fish, right. After casting the lines and waiting for an age, we still haven't caught anything. So first mate Chris gets us to reel them in to check. God, the actual pulling it in is exhausting. So, uh, and it could have popped out of the water. There we go. Thanks, Rory, thank you. Right, nothing coming in. Oh, look at that. We caught, what the hell is that? Heavy. Muscle? I'm not entirely wow. sure. That is, that is weird. We just caught it some weird species of <laughs> mollusk or something. Okay. Shall we consign it back to the sea? Yeah, throw it back in the sea. I don't want to be a party pooper, but these look like just bits of black, black cable to me. But you know what? We're concentrating too hard because the only way you can catch a fish is to be completely distracted and doing something well, else. Stick the line in. Go and, and, do something and then else. go and do something else, you know. Usually what happens, everybody quits, they go down, they get some lunch. And then suddenly... And then you catch yeah. something. Yeah. Okay. okay. So oh, we're concentrating. We'll and the distraction we're looking for soon pops up. Wow. Oh, wow. Jesus. No, it was up. It surfaced. It took a big blow. And now it's gone down. Fish on! Fish on! What? It's a fish. They've got a fish! That's my line! That's my Get line! Get down! I knew we'd be distracted. You see, we got distracted by the pilot whale, and now we've got a fish! This is inevitable. Give us instruction here. What should I be doing, Chris? Pulling it Just in. wheeling it in. Oh, OK, let's get him in. Keep reeling. Dara is in my seat. The crucial moment is in the last few feet, where the fish can escape in the wake of the boat. No, wait a minute, I think this one is... Whoa! Great. We don't reel in hard enough, and the fish gets off the hook. Did it get off? No, nothing. Yeah, he got a glimpse of you and ran the other way. Oh, no, you're kidding me. <laughs> ah! Oh, he got off as well. Ah! Well done, boy. How are you doing, you guys? Well done. Great work, great work. Mine got off as well. Apparently, this is the way fish work. 
they set up whales at the front of the boat, so we all run to the front of the boat to see the whale, which was genuinely quite brilliant. And then, while they were up at the front of the boat, then they get snagged. And we all had to climb down or climb up, and then we made a mess of it. So, so we've caught nothing except each other's lines every so often, but we did see a whale. With the fishing successfully flunked by the class of 2011, we head for Provincetown, also known as P-Town. Its exposed position to Atlantic storms has shaped Provincetown's history. Oh, it's pretty, isn't it? Mm. And the tower, the tower is quite interesting. It's a bit rapunzel, isn't it? We've yeah, seen the tower from a long distance. I think distance we saw it, we think we saw it from the other side. Yeah, we have to come around. It's a water tower, I guess. Really but maybe it's a watchtower as well for looking out. It's not a water tower. It's, it's too skinny and tall yeah, for a water tower. Tower. You'd only get a couple of cupfuls out of that. The tower is actually a monument to where the pilgrims first landed during a storm before they relocated to Plymouth. In the 1800s, the great East Coast fishing grounds brought Portuguese fishermen here, but their industry was nearly destroyed by storms at the end of the century, so the sea captains offered cheap accommodation to visiting artists, playwrights and actors. P-Town became Gay Town. It's remained so for the last hundred years. It now has the highest proportion of same-sex couples in the entire United States. And it's the storms along this coast that have given this boat such an extraordinary history. Originally based in Chatham, just 50 miles along the Cape, Lifeboat 36500 has been fully restored by local enthusiasts. It's the last of its kind. On February 18th, 1952, the Chatham crew took this boat out to find out what a radar sighting they had of a stern section of a T2 tanker that had been in half in the storm. So they went out in about 35 foot breaking sea, and uh, it was dark. Pendleton had power and the lights went on. They saw this little boat down below, they threw down a ladder, and they all started climbing down. And Bernie said, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't all come down at once. So they all came in, all jumped in. Into this boat? Into this boat. They put 27 up in here, wow. four back there, and they lost one man. And on the way back, they thought that they were just going to run it up on the beach. But as they all said, they felt that there was an extra hand at the helm, and they were able to get into Chatham and brought them all ashore. This has now become a registered historic place. That is correct. It is history, and uh, all of us, when we take that helm or stand there, we feel we're on hallowed ground. Dick, thank you for inviting us onto your boat. Could she make a trip to New York? New York City? Yeah. Um, yes. How long will it take you to get down there? <laughs> well, it, she makes eight knots, which is about, what, nine miles an hour, something like that. It's, uh, we've been to New London, and that took two days, so I'm guessing maybe four days. We have a bit of an event to get to, and I think this could be exactly the kind of boat that would, that would grace such an event. But who's going to bring it back? No, that is never my problem. That is <laughs> never my issue about how things get back. So they can't take us to New York. But they're going to give us a lift along the coast to Woods Hole, where we can catch the ferry to Martha's Vineyard, a place famed for wooden boats. Am I being naive to assume that now or at some stage in the island's history there was grape growing? That's when the Gosnold arrived. Captain Gosnold came yeah. along and he landed on the island and the whole island was covered in grapevines and he named it after his daughter, infant daughter, Martha, yeah. and the fact that there were great mines all over Martha's oh, Vineyard. Nice. That's a nice story. Is there an obituary column in there, Griff? No, it's just we things to whether do. whether we're in it or not. <laughs> Have you noticed, by the way, that as we film this, because we've been in the country for six days, and as we film this, we have got weird looks from all the Americans as we've been doing this, because we don't look like anyone who's ever appeared on American That's television. True. Yeah. The, uh, you know, all the news anchors, all the daytime all hosts. The pretty handsome all people. The really stunning, well, well dressed. Quaffed yeah. We look like those guys appear on the daytime TV shows to say that their mother has beaten them up and thrown yeah. them out there. One of those. Yeah. Dara and I intend to inspect the lifestyles of the rich and famous who generally live on this island. 
in genteel Edgartown, there's a house up for sale. So we pose as a